Good day everyone. Thank you so much. We got an honor today to virtually standing in front of distinguished audience at the third international conference on management, economics and finance. Myself, Antonio Salijoyo and my colleague Stefiani Norimana got an honor to share a presentation entitled as Risk Management Maturity Assessment based on ISO 31000 a pathway toward the organization resilience and sustainability post-COVID-19. The case study of SOE, or state-owned enterprise company in Indonesia. Myself from the Center for Risk Management and Sustainability Organization, likewise my colleague Stefiani Norimarna. Allow us to divide the presentation into five items from introduction to the conclusion, where Basically, we observe, and I believe also most of the audience observe, the global pandemic of COVID-19 gave a harsh lesson to the organization around the world, whereby many organizations collapse due to the sudden change of consumer behavior, disruption of the supply chain, and the effect of working from home. In this case, I pick up what Obrinovic et al. quote, Ineffective risk management combined with breakdowns in financial reporting accounts for many business breakdown and or bankruptcy around the world. It is also that confirmed with the perception and the survey uh, where the world GDP has been estimated to shrink around minus 5% by end of 2020, which is this is worse than the latest economic crisis in 2008 where the strength of the world GDP was only around minus 0.01%. What does it mean? It means there is a mega shift, not just a trend, where the new normal will come in any case, has the need to build and have resilience and sustainability upsurging around the world, the experience by many organizations. That also actually concerns one particular state-owned enterprise in Indonesia which is in the midst of the attempt to strive for a strategic objective through business in transformation effort. In this case, the company needs to assess and determine the current existing risk management maturity level and then build a roadmap to have a better maturity and having higher resiliency and also sustainability. Therefore, me and my colleague Stefiani put forward the idea to conduct research based on the methodologies, document review, questionnaire, focus group discussion, and interview with the executive of such an SOE. The result compiled and then mapped to ERMA ISO 31000 RM cube, which is actually it is the risk management maturity model for the ISO 31000 adopter. The ERMA ISO 31000 RMQ consists of 6 attributes, 22 indicators, 52 parameters, and 168 factors. Before we conduct the field research, we did the literature review, whereby some very critical information of key points as follows. The first one, the Ministry of Indonesian State or Enterprise has issued a directive in 2011 which is imposing SOEs in Indonesia to implement risk management. However, the implementation was not so high as the lately or recently where actually COVID-19 impact uh, upsurge. The government agency of standardization, or we call it by the Studies National, has attempted to fully adopt the ISO 31000, 2009, and then uh, uh, increase or improve to 30,000 2018 which is become national standard of Indonesia and based on the city survey result however not many SOE even in Asia not only in Asia not incorporated such a risk management reporting accountability because yeah as rigorous as their partner in a parallelly on a corporation especially those listed in the stock exchange. Some other study also say and emphasize that COVID-19 is a transboundary crisis 
that represent a significant change for organization, including business and public institution, as already quoted and put forward by Bryce et al. 2020, that include SOE. Since the risk resilience and sustainability mirror and legacy risk management maturity, many SOE start their assessment initiative to understand the current level or the baseline and how then they build upon their organization's maturity upward to higher level. This then, as a conclusion of literature review, I have another two following slides. Should and Hauster saying that a firm with low maturity risk in management will experience difficulties in realizing its ERM program to become sustainable. Rather than shape saying that implementing the concept and the principle of risk management enables the firm to formulate unique strategies to minimize the potential losses from the threat faced by the firm and to exploit the opportunities to put the firm in advantageous situation. Likewise, Bongoin et al. and Songling et al. saying that the firm maturity risk management improvement does not solely lie on the firm performance and its implementation alone to obtain a competitive advantage. Anamala et al. say that an optimum ERM implementation in a firm enables the top management to cope with a different type of risk effectively. Whereas myself in my other paper saying that risk management maturity improvement is not only considered as an objective but as a tool to improve the firm capacity and capability in managing the risk which the more extensive the firm on managing the risk, the higher the value and impact of ERM to the firm's decision-making capabilities as well as to the execution of their plans and action. This then completely then added or supported by the ISO 31000 architecture itself as the International Risk Management Guideline which consists of the principles of managing risk that actually center with the proposition value creation and protection then the framework which emphasizes leadership and commitment and then the process of risk management itself starting from scoping, contexting, criterizing up to the risk assessment and then risk reporting, communication, consultation, monitoring and review this all in all we pick up the very important reference where actually we map what we observe and we, what we try to collect i.e. the risk management activity model for IC31000 adopter call it RM31000 RMQ which consists of 6 attributes 22 indicators 52 parameters and 168 test factor what are the results? The results give the overall count of current company's risk management maturity is at the repeatable level or at the scoring value of 1.62. What does it mean? It means it reflects incapability and out of capacity to embrace the RM flows to protect and create its value. If further suggests that the current state of risk management maturity lacks resiliency and sustainability that result in the organization needs amid COVID-19 and toward the new normal post-COVID-19. Then, upon such result, then some development which is done to develop the roadmap, the, in this case, the board of directors determine the time frame and the milestone the such risk management maturity should be an average scoring value at 4 at least or minus level by the end of 2024. Such maturity level actually reflecting or mirroring the capability of the organization toward resilience and sustainability. Here, if we look at the roadmap, it's constructed to assure that the company risk management become an ablot to accomplish the company's strategic goal through a strongly internalized risk culture, a higher risk resiliency, and much stronger sustainability. 
Then to accomplish such ultimate target of scoring value at 4.00 or higher by the year 2024 is organized into four major programs. Development of the project policy and procedure, training and socialization, development of the risk management information system, and evaluation and review of the effectiveness of the initial policies and procedure. Then, if we pick it up another graph here, some key SF we call key factor are identified and explicitly put to the board of director as the critical factors in ensuring the inflection point that need to be kept well yearly. In here, it is illustrated by some fixed line and some dotted line. Yeah, upon the target of developing up to the score of 4.0, there is a possibility that actually the effort and then the result might not be at the expected level. Then it is identified and then it is also recommended to the BOD of the company to keep some factors to need needed to be in place and then able or enable the organization keep the inflection to their yearly target. Recommendation on organization resilience and sustainability in this case is a couple of things. Very shortly is assuring the mapping of all key business process available, conducting business impact analysis, using the bow tie analysis, using the business process recovery strategy, expanding the radar to assure that the risk management process is dealing both downside risk and upside risk. And lastly, conducting regular review and evaluation of the effectiveness of the crisis response procedure. Overall, the conclusion of this research study confirmed that state-owned enterprise can use the risk management maturity assessment to define the baseline of the current practice of ISO 31000 risk management and help them develop a roadmap in building a higher level of organization resilience and sustainability. To achieve such a target of scoring value minimum 4.00 or more in 2024, some key success factors or key SF are identified and recommended to the executive board of directors to help them define the inflection point to keep the momentum to a progressive increase of the year-on-year -year maturity level from 2020 to 2024. And therefore, we could say that the study also confirmed that the risk management maturity model using ISO 31000, in this case is ERMA ISO 31000 MQ, is applicable and suitable for the ISO 31000 adopter. It is found that it gives a much rigorous result to the SOE as opposed to their previous assessment result which had applied a generic model. That's the end of our presentation. We do hope that this presentation is useful and gives some benefit to the all audience and participants. We thank you again to the committee of the third international conference on management, economic and finance held in Amsterdam, the Netherlands on the 28th February 2021. Thank you from myself, Anthony Salijoyo, and my colleague, Steviani Norimala. Good day.